I'm Steve Hay, this is Carpet Tech, a wonderful world of woodworking, and today we're going to have a go at doing some epoxy pouring. It seems to be the trendy thing at the moment. Now what I want to do is do a pour for, instead of uh, river tables are all the gear, but quite frankly epoxy is not cheap, and unless you've actually got a commission or you've got a set idea of exactly what you want to do, there is so much fun you can have with using much smaller amounts of epoxy. So I want to do a, a serving tray pour. Epoxy I'm doing this pour with is Perfect card Cast Rigid Casting. Comes in two parts and it's a two to one ratio by volume. So you've got four litres of resin, two litres of hardener. What I do, I just went to the local supermarket and they've got all these these drink cups and uh, I personally only use them once and throw them away. For the cost of them, it's not worth being miserly. I don't believe. I have turned with this, this particular one, this is rigid cast, and I have turned with it, which I'll show you here, but quite frankly, I don't think it was the correct resin to turn with because yeah it was a bit um bit not nice so i'll experiment that and i'll go down and see if i can get the right turning resin and we might do another video later on on, on turning turning stuff with resin which is good fun uh, the other things you can do with resin which i, I find is absolutely fascinating this bowl was one, um, actually my son was making, he came up here for Christmas and he got a little bit enthusiastic while he was turning and turned right through the bottom of the bowl. So he went through the top on the bottom. So what I've done, I've just filled that with resin and then I'm gonna fill that with a different colored resin here and then you've still got your mounting points. When he's turning, as soon as he changes color, he knows he's pretty close to going through and the same with the back. So we'll see how that turns out, it's interesting. Another thing I do when I'm doing a pour is I always have something spare that doesn't matter if it's not a perfect job or not. Because when you've got stuff left over, it's so nice just to put it in a project. This one here, I have had for, oh, I don't know, about three or four different casting sessions. And I've just put my excess in there, so I have no idea what those colours are going to look like. But I'll pull it out later on and I'll turn it and have a look-see. Or you can get just cheap little, these are caster moulds for drink casters. And when you've got a bit left over, just pour it in there. So you're not wasting it, because as I said, it's, it's not cheap. It's not like liquid gold, but... If you can utilize every little bit, um, you're getting more bang for your buck. And if it's something you want to go to the markets and, and sell or uh, give away, it's almost money for jam because it's, it's waste that you wouldn't use. But by doing different colors and different um, pores together, you can get some interesting results. This was a lump of timber literally I had kicking around the yard an off cut of a buttress that came out here and around here and it was that thick. What I actually did was did a resaw, or cut it, then did a resaw. So I had two bits and then I cut them up into three different pieces. So as you can tell, I haven't machined that. That's as rough as Hessian underpants. Um, that has, but that's only because I uh, resawed it but you can see the saw marks in it. What I suggest you do with any timber you're gonna work, either wire brush or wire wheel. I used a wire wheel on a grinder and it gets rid of all the soft stuff. You don't want soft stuff 
because number one, it floats to the surface and gives you a, an unclean pour and the resin won't stick to it. I thought, no, the, yeah, but the resin, this epoxy is gonna set. No, it doesn't. It uh, becomes soft and flaky. So get your wood all nicely prepared before you start. I will give you a word of caution here, word of caution. If you go onto YouTube to see how to do river pours or epoxy work, they make it look so easy. I have gone through three litres of resin to work out how to use it. So it can be a costly exercise if you just get in there and you're going to do a big job straight off. No, start with something really small, get used to working with the materials, get an idea of the process that you're going to use. And this is only my process. It's not the only one. There's a lot of people on YouTube doing it totally different ways. There are some I shake my head and go, well, why would you do that? But then again, it works for them. And hey, more power to you if you can work out a way that works for you and it's not my way. It doesn't matter, providing you're happy with the result. Make sure it's nice and flat down and not crimped up in the corners. Although you'll find if this plastic is loose, it's not an issue because when the epoxy goes in there, it'll actually spread it out. I will be doing these without gloves, but I highly recommend you use gloves. This is uh, the colouring I'm using. And I thought i will put, they're all, this one comes in a set and it's different colours of pearlescence, which change colour. As I said, it's a volume thing. Paddle pop sticks or something similar. There, that's what I use to stir it with. Now we will mix up the resin. I'm using that beaker and I'm using a 70 mil container. I'll have that one is for the resin, that one's for the hardener. I pour the resin first and you just I just fill it up, not to the top, but just to the, the lip. Pour it in. And then I'll have the hardener over this side and fill that up to the lip. Always put the top on straight away or else you are asking to knock it over. So it's two of these, two resins. to one hardener. Use a paddle pop stick to get it all out. This is um, quite nice. Use a resin one on the resin one and use another one on the hardener so you're not mixing them up. And I don't know if you can see that on, but all of a sudden it'll go craze. Now you've got to mix it for two minutes. So we've got 6.38. 8.38, I'll stop mixing. Oh, that's it. Okay, that one's done. So now I'm gonna get some color. Get a little bit on the end of a paddle pop stick. So I didn't need put too much in there. Then you just mix it all in. Make sure you don't have any lumps of colour. 
Okay, here we go. We're ready for a first pour. And I find if you pour it on the timber, it reduces the chance of bubbles. You still will get bubbles. There's no doubt about that. Okay, and I think we'll we'll have another one of those. And we'll tip all this in. What I want to do is actually cover the timber completely. That way when it's dried. I um, I can plane it off down to the timber. Now you'll notice with timber it might float. This bit here is floating. So what you've got to do then is weigh it down. Now what I do to hold them down is not very scientific or hard. Two liter ice cream containers like this and they're just full of water. Make sure they're dry on the bottom. I just noticed it's a little bit damp on the bottom. So just make sure there's no water on it. And then you put that on top and that will hold it down. And we'll get rid of some air bubbles. And that is it.